Welcome to the 18th, 19th, 20th <laughs> rendition of White Noise, a series of open mics um, at Greenkill Art Studio. Um, I am your host, Summer. Um, here's your other host tonight. I'm Moral P, or sometimes Melissa. And we're here to facilitate some poetry. Um, uh, I guess and other stuff Amongst too. Amongst other things. But I do poetry. But um, <laughs> yeah, things. so yeah, welcome. It's easy to work when your feet are placed squarely beneath you, not horizontal to your head, heels resting on the cold metal of the laboratory table, chest cracked open like an egg and insides out like an egg. It is a joy to create when the earth is still spinning and the stars are still placed squarely in the sky. Orion wields his galactic bow and takes aim at your temple, and suddenly you're splattered, streaked across the firmament with him, like so many rocks falling, falling in a meteor shower. It is a pleasure to give back to the world when you have something to give, when there's no one standing over you taking, and yet, it is only from the emptiness of the pit that I find my pen the sharpest, my tongue the quickest, as it licks serpentine at smirking lips. Thank you. Based off some fears I have about my own psyche and psyches of people I don't know, so it's called Cut. I feel like I'm trying to qualify this, like I'm not this kind of guy, but it's whatever. <laughs> um, so the poem is called Cut. <clears throat> to cut the dog is holy. A cut and a cut, holy as circumcision. Holy heartbeat ripped from chest. My mind wanders to the horrors of Bronx City, where every public transit post is my last stand. A tribute brought by the blood of dog, blood that races from my saintly heart into my sturdy member. Then I grace the horrors of Bronx City like dogs with a cock of fire full of salvation. I am God, I am, I am God. I rip sin from their wombs and I spit my spit until they're filthy holes. There is a dog barking on the public transport and I am deliverance. A cut and a cut to pink these pups, and I am baptized, and I baptize the Bronx in their blood. I kiss pink pulp flesh and suck my spit from the bitches, <laughs> suck my spit from the bitches, and I eat, I eat, I am God. There is a phone ringing from a pay phone that has been out of service for seven years, and it is the only clean place left in the Bronx. I'm shoving scraps of paper in my pocket and eating dog like I never ate before. To cut is to sacrifice the only good left in me so I can heal this world. So I patrol the pound and I cut inside these cuts so every layer peels back and I reveal the great universal truth. All hail the abominable flesh thief. All hail the patron saint of blood spit dog bark. I am sucking the juice of pink. I am God. <laughs> Thank you. I saw you across two lanes of traffic from my car driving in Albany the other day and just that spare glimpse of the back of your head, one hand clasped in the other, made me feel so sick I drove home and spent the rest of the day in bed. That night I dreamt that you talked to me all day and gave me a picture of your mother. We sat by a pool of clear water in a room made of wood and you rinsed your feet and then beckoned me to sit beside you and cleaned mine too. Then a dream blur. Then me standing across the room from you. I remember this part very clearly. I said, I have a question. You turned to look at me. You stood up. I was hesitant, but in my dream I couldn't stop myself. I asked, why are you so nice to me? At this point, I am somehow already in your arms. You say, I don't know. You keep holding me. I wake up, lonelier than I have ever been, soaked in sweat. Thank you. Um, and then I I'm packing my bag since I first tried to leave eight years ago. A plastic rosary from Mark that bears testimony to ink stains from an exploded pen. Last I heard, he is out on the res in Wisconsin teaching writing. The ivory cross stained blue and yellow and brown makes me believe that God must not take things personally. My Nana's funeral card with an Irish blessing, I returned just in time for her brain to hemorrhage, and I made it down to the hospital just in time to watch her die. And the St. Christopher coin with her ash embedded in it, be at my window and direct me through when the vision blurs from out of the blue. A defunct alarm clock. It once woke me each morning in darkness to sit in the zendo, chanting and in bells, incense, refuge, an empty pack of camels, non-filters, the state bear waltzing along the bottom, San Francisco's crazy bum logic professed over spilt liquor and beer, stale cigarettes and stumbling singing swallowed by the bay's pre-dong fog, an old matchbook, 
red phosphor turning purple, the match heads bleeding into the next, forming one large useless glob. Two lighters. One I have no recollection of receiving. Its picture of the flag and the constitu constitution on it reads, We the people in large script. Some flit of madness made the purchase. An inside joke I had with me and my past mad self that could only cohere to an empty stomach, too much drink, and perfect nihilism. The other is baby blue with a martini glass on it, etched away by strung out nerves, picking and picking for days and days. Clarkson, now a river rat in Colorado, gave it to me, saying, always carry the fire through his tobacco stained full tooth grin. The vintage styled matchbook she sent me away with stuffed with a 20 in case I were in a pinch, a wheat penny for good luck, a tiny pencil and postage stamp so I could write. An origami swam to remember to return, a hair tie, I had long hair and she would later cut it. A piece of agate she found along the coast in Humboldt, a candle in case you make a new friend it's their and it's their birthday with one wooden match to strike. A button and needle and thread for when things broke, a note enumerating the items, assigning meaning, encouraging me to be nice to the stray dogs and to kiss the Caribbean. Puerto Rico's jungle steam rising up and out into the tropics of cancer, siestas with the workers, cacao trees planted up and down the hillsides, the living borders of mango trees, the remnants of sugar plantations, Catskill rain, knobby paths, the paws at the sight of trillium bearing, bearing its ephemeral blood red flower, a tiny bronze statue of Buddha in meditation, Seven Nagas hovering over him, protecting him against Mara, their serpentine form like a fan flame radiating around Shakyamuni's emaciated concentration. So much weight for such a small, tarnished figure. A map of Mount Tam, folded and perfectly creased, beckon me, beckoning me back to incense offerings at the feet of Jizo. Cliffside trails covering coastline, wild strawberries and wild grass. Redwoods, redwoods and ferns. Denver's snow in March, an old friend growing older, a stainless steel bracelet handed over as I, psychotic and scared, left their car finally free from LA smog and endless hordes of tourists and transients and transplants, the plastic smiles and tender violence of Venice. Heat coming off the asphalt of Highway 1, pointed thumb and measured stride along cow fields, El Nino's rain, shelter in the roadsides, composting toilet, meth addicts burning pipe in the lot, sheltered in their beige sedan. Almost an entire roll of electric tape. Construction takes many forms. A piece of seashell with dull shades of purple and undertones of yellow and orange, speckled from rolling in sand and surf. It takes the shape of a giant's fingernail, fossilized by salt brine, place of origin unknown. There is no way to get it back to its place. As I sift it across my fingers, I hear the ocean reminding me how to breathe with its tide-like cadence. In, out, in, out, in, out. Thanks.
of things that once specified begin shrinking. Fires of the blinking out stars of all we had hoped we are. And you, 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 you. You, a keen razor gaze. You, an icy crepuscular ray. You, so finger looking cool. You, equine kind of mind. You, a wash incarnation light. You, thoughtless and lithe. You, right beside me, drifting so far off degrees and hiding in places unknowable to me. Thank you. Um, okay, this one's called Augustus. <sighs> Noble, humid emperor, the cicadas are late for screaming in the trees a gentle humming of anxiety. The hurricanes are early. August means to increase heat and expectations on vacations. The sundress still has its tag. The cicadas now sound charged. Lasers sampled their songs. The ants toil at a carcass. The harvest comes. The fairgrounds are trampled and spin sugar, floss clouds, Yellow pencils sharpened and anticipating the moon like a proposal. Who will bend on their knee for me? Um, let's see. I've been thinking recently, well, the last couple times I've come here, just constantly so impressed by everybody that 
comes to perform and share their talents and their art. And as a musician, especially impressed by all the writers and the poets, and it's just been very inspiring coming here and getting something a little different um, to kind of absorb into my well. And um, I really love when someone comes up here and says, oh, I, I wrote this yesterday, or I wrote this three hours ago, I wrote this on the car on the way here. And then they just bust out this beautiful thing. Um, so I've kind of challenged myself to maybe come here with something new every time I come. And I haven't been here in a little while, so I'm gonna play two new things that I will workshop for you. Oh, thanks. Hold your applause, hold your applause. Um, okay. So this one is called Awakening. And um, I wrote it after I read this novel called Waking by Eva Feigs or Feigs, I'm not sure how to say her name, that I just kind of stumbled on at a bookstore, and which I usually never do. I just bought it like without knowing anything about it and I ended up really enjoying it. So I wrote this song. And I guess there's some inherent transience in it. It's all about the passing of time and one person's journey with that. I feel the birds are singing under my skin A quiet electricity The sunlight creeping over me Awakening The others are asleep I hide between the sheets and make up my own dreams. Visions of the outside world, I force the petals to unfurl. I come alive again. So many mornings of been in hopeless pursuit of something that I could not quite name. The girl with blossoms in her hair casts a judgmental stare into my mirror, turning me aflame. I cry, I can't hide my mind away from the tide. Jostled by the waves of the endless common days, I'm at the ocean's edge. The water washes over me. Hold me, oh, I feel as though I'm born into this world again. I see her waiting there for me, as when she cared for me. I'll go with her, I will take her hand. 